Let's review these patterns of development. These are different modes of writing that are used for different purposes. They are narration, description, exemplification, process, cause and effect, comparison and contrast, classification and division, and definition. Let's go ahead and talk about cause and effect is exactly how it sounds. So the pattern of development that discusses either the reasons for an occurrence or the observed or predicted consequences of an, occur of an occurrence. Process describes how something happens. Cause and effect analyzes why something happens. So those are very closely linked, but I want you to note the difference. Process describes how something happens cause and effect analyzes why something happens. So cause and effect is a bump up from process analysis. You do have to understand the process to understand cause and effect. The questions that go along with cause and effect are why did it happen? What caused it? What does it cause? What are its effects? With an E, not an A. How is it related to something else? A cause and effect development technique are they're typically discussed together. However, in a particular paragraph, one or the other will be emphasized. A paragraph emphasizing the causes of, of something typically begins with an effect. The purpose of the paragraph is to explore how that effect came to be, to show what caused it. In a paragraph emphasi emphasizing the effects of something, a writer begins with a particular cause, then explores the consequences of the effects of this cause. So that's something that we're going to um, look at. So um, using transition words to emphasize cause and effect relationships between ideas is useful. So words and phrases showing cause are because, since, is due to, is caused by. And then words and phrases showing consequence are as a result, consequently, therefore, it follows, then, and for this reason. So you can put those tools in your tool belt and have them, and have them for when you need them. Just some key things really quickly with cause and effect that can become quite faulty if you don't do these is don't oversimplify. Don't confuse time order with causation. Just because something came before something else doesn't mean it caused it. So you need to avoid the those faulty um, causality arguments in your writing. And don't confuse causes and effects. One starts the other and not the other way around. So knowing which one actually caused the other is really important. Here's an example of an effect paragraph that's focusing on the effects. Since my daughter has been in daycare, she's become better at a few different things. To start off, her vocabulary is much lar larger and more developed. Before she started daycare, my daughter had a few select words that she would say, like mama, dada, Coco, one of the puppies, and some other simple words. Now, she tries to repeat everything that is said. Another result of her being in daycare is that she has the ability to interact with other children better. In the past, she was only around one child. Now she's around about six to eight kids, and she has learned to share her toys in a plane of group with other children. Her learning to share is carried over at home when she tells her daddy or me that it's, it's his turn or mommy's turn when putting her socks on. A third outcome of her being in daycare is the fact that she is becoming more self-reliant. Before daycare, she wouldn't try very hard to help me with getting dressed. But now she wants to try to do it all on her own. She puts her pull-ups on and tries to pull on her shirts and her pants herself. Socks will go on upside down, but at least her shoes go on the correct feet. Um, I'm really glad that I decided to put her in a daycare for the benefits that have been really great. Okay, so that's an example of an effect paragraph, focusing on the effects of the cause, which is putting her child in daycare. So... This is just one example, and um, we'll look at other examples of just cause paragraphs in class.